Hi, hello? Hello? Is this Chad? Yeah. Hey, man, how you doing? Hey, Chad, this is um, Tommy Bryson. Just want to let you know this call is going to be recorded and potentially uploaded to YouTube, okay? All right, no problem. All right, so how can I help you, brother? Say that again? How can I help you? Oh, okay. So, yeah, first off, I want to say thank you for, for you know, taking the call. And also, thank you for, for you know, how you, you know, you give all that information on YouTube. Okay, awesome, so, bro. Thank you. First, of, first and foremost, um, so... You know, I'm a young entrepreneur, and I pretty much wanted to kind of get, you know, some some information on like pretty much trying to direct my direct myself into the right path of, I, you know, I already have a, I already have a cleaning business. Um, I also have a little, you know, a couple other businesses that are technically considered side hustles in my opinion right now until they grow, but. Um, First and foremost, I wanted to kind of see how much do you normally charge for your for um, to have it uh, to become an accountant for somebody like for me, um, and then do you have any um, any like pretty much instructions on how to budget myself to financially get to the right part, uh, you know part in of my, my, you know, entrepreneurial lifestyle right now. Okay. So let, let's tackle the first question, which is you have a cleaning business. How long have you been doing that for? A year. One year. And like, how much money would you say you make per month? Okay. Um, a month, um, I pretty much make, I make about $4,000 a month. And is that net or gross? That's net. That's not okay. And is that your only source of income, or like that's like the main one, like right now? That's the main one, and then you know, I kind of I'm still on unemployment, so you know stuff like that. So. Okay, okay. And let me ask you a question. Right now, by the way, how do you get started with that entire cleaning business? So how did I get started? Yeah, how do you get started with the cleaning business? Um, I went, I went through um a franchise. And I just paid into the franchise and then started from there. Are you able to give out the name of the franchise? Like, tell all the people? So am like, I the process? Get, am I able to get, um, get away from the franchise? No. Are you able to share the name of the franchise to help other people watching this video? Oh, um, it's um, the franchise is called Stratus. Stratus? Out in Georgia. In Georgia? Yeah. Okay. And how much, how much did it cost to get into the business? Or the details? Um, the cost of the business, I mean, they have different packages. So pretty much, you know, you can start as low as, like, you pretty much buy into, like, a monthly package. So it can go as low as $500. That they'll, they'll guarantee that they'll, they'll find you $500 worth of crime. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you can go as up, you know, as high as, like, $50,000. So, you wow. know, you buy into the package based off of how much money, you know, you have on hand, and then you go from there. And then they just, they... How, many, they how much money did you start with? I started off with 2500 And now you build it up to $4,000 a month in yes. one year? Yes. That's awesome. How many hours do you work per, per week? I work a lot. I, I'm, I work like 80 plus hours, but wow. I, went, I went a different path. Um, you know, I started, I worked in the business, so I quit my job and went full on in, into the cleaning business. Okay. So, you don't have any employees you know, right now? Could you repeat that? Employees? I, I only have one employee right now. Okay. And uh, between you and, and that employee, you guys work 80 hours together? Yeah. And by the way, the $4,000 is after you pay him or her also? Yes. Okay. Awesome. All right. So we, we, okay, awesome. So now let me ask you a question. Do you have any debt right now? Yes, I do. Okay, awesome. So how much, how much, how much money do you owe? I owe roughly around, um, with student loans and everything included, probably about like, I'll say close to 20, 20K. $20,000 with student loans. 
And is that, do you have any credit card debt also? I have a credit card that's in collections and then, you know, I just started establishing credit right now with, with some credit cards that I have open right now. Okay. But in total, you would say like overall, your entire debt is around $20,000. Yeah. All right. So what are your expenses right now per month? Uh, you know, I got business expenses, so that's like, that racks up to almost, um, and well, you're, 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 you've told me so far that basically you make $4,000 net. So it's after you pay your employees, after you pay the business and all that stuff. So out of this income, what are your normal expenses? Like how much, like what are your normal expenses? Okay. My normal expenses are, uh, I would say about like, um, uh, close to like two to three K. Okay. So two to three K. About three K. Three K. About three K. So let's go with three K. That means you have an extra $1,000 left over. Does that sound right? Yeah. Okay. So every single budget has four walls, and the four walls are basically food, shelter, utilities, and transportation. Everything else is usually going to be an extra. So my main focus, if my name is Chad right now, I'm down in Georgia, I have a cleaning business, what would I do right now? The first thing would be, I would want to get out of debt, right? Oh. So I would, put, I would put down basically a bare knuckle budget, and cut out everything else that I don't need and put all the extra money towards paying off debt. Now, before you do that, I recommend you save, for example, $1,000 for an emergency fund. And you can start investing maybe like 1% of your income, but just to build a habit, but no more than that. Because right now your priority is just going to be, for example, just paying off debt. Gotcha. And by the way, let me ask you a question. You said yeah. earlier you wanted to build credit. Why do you want to build credit? Well, I'm trying to build credit because eventually I'm trying to buy a house. Okay. And to leverage credit to, you know, to kind of, um, you know, build my business up and things like that. Okay. All right. So leverage gives you two things, right? It gives you speed and it also gives you a lot of risk, right? So let's yeah. for, for example, you go ahead and you get into more debt and you go from having, for example... Um, for thousand dollars in income to now maybe six thousand or eight thousand dollars, and you're able, for example, to service that debt you actually have. However, when things go down, because eventually, as you guys know, as you know, Chad, things do go down eventually, right? And if things do yeah. go down, you have, for example, a slow month or, or a slow quarter, and you can't service that debt anymore. That debt anymore, you're gonna have a massive problem. So leverage can is like a double-edged sword. It gives you a benefit, but then you also have a lot of risk attached to it. So if I were you, here's the thing, right? People don't tell you this, yeah. but in reality, you don't need credits to buy a house. Okay. All you need is basically a decent down payment. And when you go to a bank, usually what they're going to ask for is to do a manual underwriting. When they take a look at basically at your income, also like how have you been paying your bills and so on. And that's all they really need. Okay. And like your pay stubs and so on. But you don't really need to build credit to actually buy a house. However, it does make the process a lot easier. So if I were you and I was trying to rebuild my credit, how would I do it? First of all, I would probably get two secure credit cards, one with Capital One, one with Discover, and I would put a small bill on each credit card. Now, do you have Netflix or internet bill at home or, or a phone bill, something like that? Yes, internet and phone, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so what I would do is basically just put a small bill on each credit card and pay it off in full every month automatically and grab the cards you actually get sent home to you and just cut them in half. That way, you don't go into debt ever again, right? Because in reality, you're paying it off every single month. But this way, you also build credits by basically tackling two of the most important things, which is basically payment history and also utilization, okay? So if you do it that way, just a small bill, the small bill method, you'll build credits and you won't have any of the debt. Okay. So only stick with two? Yeah, just stick with two. You, all you need is two. You just need two. Okay. If you have two right now, you don't need the ones I told you. It doesn't really matter. If you have two or three right now, just put a small bill on each of them Cut the physical credit cards and just put them in auto pay every single month. That way you build your credit, but you're not getting into debt and you don't have any more risk of getting into debt. Now, that means on a daily basis, all you have to do is just go ahead and use a debit card or cash to basically buy whatever you want to buy. You'll miss up, for example, on a few points here and there. But again, you're not going to go into debt, which is the most important thing. Okay. Now, I want to ask you something also, Chad, right? You, you told me initially 
that at one point you had credit card debt that eventually sent you into collections. Tell me the story. So, you know, I was, I was young, younger at that time, and, and pretty much I didn't know the whole system of a credit card. So pretty much they gave me a $500 limit um, and pretty much just maxed it out right after, like, you know, a couple months in. And mm -hmm. what? And I wasn't paying down the... I paid down the minimum for, uh, for a while, but then eventually I just... It, you know, it just got carried away. So the interest started going up and things like that. And I just started owing way more than, than you know, needed to be. So eventually it just, you know, it just got ahead of me at that point. Uh, what's your credit score right now? Now it's, um, it's about 680. 680. By the way, that's, that's not bad at all. That's pretty good. Not bad. Yeah. What, what I don't, what I, what I don't want for you is basically because, the thing is, that, by the way, that story is a story of a lot of people, right? You, you start off with a little bit of money. Before you know it, it keeps adding up and adding up more money. And you just borrowed 500 but now you owe, for example, 700 or $1,000. You're like, what the heck is going on here? I can't make these payments. Things just went bad. I can't afford this anymore. And before you know it, you're in collections, right? But yeah. when you do buy a house, they're going to want to make sure you can actually make those payments on time, right? That's the most important thing. So... Yeah. If you do the one bill method, that's going to show them, hey, this person can actually make those bills on time. But however, if you don't want to deal with credit, if you're paying, for example, your phone bill on time, your light bill on time, all those other bills, your rent on time, right? That shows them also, hey, this person can go ahead and also handle this mortgage. Okay. Now, let me ask you a question also. You said you want to buy a house. Um, what, What's your goal with that house? Like, when do you want to buy and all that stuff? Well, I'm looking at it two year time frame because, you know, I'm also trying to, you know, actually uh, marry my, my, my girlfriend now. Congratulations. So, yeah. Thank you. And, and, you know, and I've been, and I watched a couple of your, I watched your video on like pricing and things like that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, cause I, I'm, I'm a, I'm, I'm a, I like to technically show off. So, so, which I understand, you know, it's not the best thing to do, especially if you don't really have the means to do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and you know, you kind of why you kind of open my eye to like, you know, another way to look at it. And I even let my girl look at it, um, look at the video as well, because I was trying to get her to get her opinion on like the the price of the ring and things like that. Yeah, I felt like I was supposed to spend like you know, ten k or something like you know, That's outrageous. Insane. For, for like yeah for for her ring so but now she's got she kind of after she looked at your video as well she kind of like told me like it doesn't have to be like you know you know extreme on the price mm -hmm. just has to you know something that that you know shows that I care you know and then yeah. you know so at the end of the day th th that's what I'm looking for right now what, so when, are you to get to get when do you want to get married when do you want to when do when do you want to propose I want to propose this year. If everything year. goes according to plan, so. Okay. Well, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll recommend you two things here, right? As far as, like, getting married, I recommend you get a book. It's called um, 21, I mean, 20, is it? Yes, 21 Questions Before You Save the Date. It's a great book. It's on Amazon, and it'll help you out a lot when it comes to asking your partner a lot of questions so you guys can be on the same page. The second thing is, yeah. before you, you buy a rent, yeah, 21 to, uh, questions. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Give me a second. I'll, I'll grab that book right now so I can show it in the video. That way you can always have it here. But it's called okay. Before You Save the Date, 21 Questions to Help You Marry with Confidence by Dr. Paul Friesen. That book okay. right there is going to help you out a ton. The cover is basically like um, two people holding hands together. And yeah. it's going to help you a lot when it comes to asking questions. Because, by the way, I spent five years with my, my, my girlfriend, now fiance. But we spent that time basically just talking, having fun. But we never actually spoke about, is this person going to be the right person for me to actually marry and long term, right? Yeah. Now, the second thing is, when it comes to buying the, the ring, I, I I basically saved a lot of money on it, right? But before I did that, I had to make sure I bought the right ring, right? So I went yeah. to a lot of jewelers to show my girlfriend, like, hey, do you like this ring? Which one do you like? Once I pointed out which one she actually liked, I got the name of it, the whole design of it, the carrots, the clarity exactly what she liked right because it's all collections by the way and then yeah. i went on ebay and i found someone selling it and that by the way this is, this is like top secret but i'll tell you it doesn't matter 
the oh. person selling on eBay wanted more money because eBay charges a fee. However, what I did was I said, hey, what's your website? I went to their website and I got a discount that way because basically that way they can avoid the entire eBay fee. So yeah. you can go on eBay, ask for their website, and buy from their website directly. On top of that, you can also go to pawn shops, right? Because you can find a lot of good rings there also, right? But it's all about find the rings she likes. Show her those new rings, whatever. And then once you find the ring you like for a very good price, that's what you want to buy. And by the way, the premium on rings are around like 50%. Okay. Okay. And by the way, once you once you buy that ring, um, you want to get insurance on it, right? And what I yeah. use is, a, is an app called Lemonade. It's like it's like renters insurance, and you can put it under your renters insurance policy. So you're gonna want an appraisal. So once you buy the ring, get an appraisal right then and there, from the entire um, for example, like the pawn shop or whoever sold it to you. You can get an appraisal. It should it should be free usually, but they might charge you money, but not that much money. But the appraisal shows the insurance. Hey. Here's how much it's worth. And by the way, guess what? The appraisal for the ring is more than I paid for it. So if we lose it, we get back a lot more money to buy her a more fancy ring. Definitely. Okay, makes sense. Yeah. So that's my advice as far as um when it comes to the wedding. Now, when it comes to buying this house, by the way, you're saying two years. In two years, gotta remember, right? In two years, we're talking about, hey, my name is Chad. In two years, I have this business. I work a lot. I have a potential yeah. fiance. On top of that, I want to pay off all my debt. I want to build some really good habits. It's going to be a lot. So in two years, yeah. I'm not sure it doesn't be possible because right now your priority is going to be paying off this debt. And when it comes to buying a house, you want to put down between 10 to 20% for the house as a down payment. Okay. And also when it comes to buying a house, the rule I follow is called the 33% rule on a 15 year mortgage, which means the house expenses including, for example, the mortgage, the taxes, insurance, uh, maintenance, HOA fee, everything included cannot exceed more than 33% of your income. So if right now, if my name is Chad and net, I'm making, for example, $4,000, I can't spend more than $1,320 on this house every single month on a 15-year mortgage. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And if you do that, I'm not ready. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And if you do that, yeah, you're not ready yet. And it's fine. Okay. You know, you have, you have other things to do right now. You have to get out of debt. Okay. I'm done with that. Then I want to save up for emergencies. Okay. I have that. Then I want to save up for my wedding. All right, let's do this. Okay. Once you're married, you're together. By the way, does your, does your potential fiance actually, actually work right now? No, she's on the right now, but she used, she was working before the pandemic. What, 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 what did she do? She was a CNA. A C What's a CNA? Uh, a certified um, nursing assistant. Okay, awesome. That means she's probably always going to have work, which is awesome. So, yeah. by the way, I, I usually don't make plans at all with uh, with um with fiancés or girlfriends, right? The all these plans, these are your plans. You talk with her about them, work with them together. But in reality, until you're married, your finances are going to stay separate. When you guys are married, you can put them together as a whole, because right oh. now you have no legal protection, and neither does she. So when you buy this house, right, that's why you got to wait. So when you guys are married and all that stuff and you want to buy a house and you guys are actually married, you can buy it together. And by the way, this is going to be a lot more easier because now it's two people working towards a down payment and paying this house early. Definitely. Okay. Now, I do have I a go ahead. Go ahead. So, so, um, oh, okay. Cause I have like, I have, I, could, I think I have like about three collections on my credit as well at the mm -hmm. very moment. And I also have a car payment. With that being said, do you think I should pay off my car payment or pay off the collection? How much do you owe in 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 your car payment? Eight thousand. Eight thousand. How much is the car worth? Less than eight thousand. It's like upside down loan at this point. How much? Do you know? It's, it's not not exactly no. It's a, a Mustang, a Ford Mustang. Okay, so you want to go to Kelly's Blue Book, okay, and you want to look at the value of that car. Now you you have two choices here. The choice is, well, by the way, that's include that's like twenty k plus eight k now, or just twenty k as a total. Twenty k as the uh, in the total, yeah. Okay, so now I have two choices here, right? I can try to pay off this car as fast as possible. I get to keep it, or for example, I can sell this car, cut my losses, buy a beater. Well, I'm basically trying to fix my whole financial situation. As far as collections, 
I have a whole video on how to fix collections. It's about basically asking for corrections. But if you do decide to pay collections, you never want to give them their information. Like saying like, hey, here's my bank account information. No, you want to pay them on a cashier check and you also want to get it an agreement with everything listed down below. You can't trust those people that much, okay? And you can also negotiate because by the way, the buyer debt for like pennies on the dollar, like maybe like a quarter in the dollar, tenths of the dollar, a dime in the dollar, they don't pay that much money for it. So it is negotiable. Okay. So you want to get an agreement faxed over to you and you want to pay them what it, a cashier check. You don't want to give them your information at all. Okay. Okay, but... You gotta decide this car right here, do I sell it, pay the difference, call it a day, I'm done with that, I can buy a two, three thousand dollar car, because I'm guessing you have a van. You said, do I, uh, oh yeah, I have a van, yeah. Yeah, and so what do you use this car for? If you're, if you're working so many hours, you're on this van 24 seven, what do you use this car for? <laughs> I mean, I, you know, it's my car before then, but yeah, um, you know, and then I never considered like, okay, Paying the car, um, selling it because I own the car, so you know. Yeah, you can sell this car, even if you have, even if you have, even if you balance on it, you can sell the car. You can sell the car and you pay the difference on it, and you're done with it. It's over. You can have an escrow company, so the person that's actually buying it feels a little more comfortable. But overall, you can sell this car. So if you sell the car, um, you cut your losses, you're done with that. You buy a little beater car, you're good to go. And plus, you're hustling, you're working. And by the way, th this this 4K. If you want to grow this business, here is what I recommend. Growing a business is always going to be hard. Most likely it's going to be more employees, more expenses. But overall, if you do this step by step, it won't be that much risk. But if you borrow a ton of money, Chad, you're going to take on a lot more risk. Now, what I don't... How old are you? I'm 25. 25? Yeah. Congrats, bro. You're not... You're 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 like like a lot ahead of other people. But overall, what I don't want you to be is like 35 years old, 40 years old, being, hey, I, I was at the top of the world and I went bankrupt and I lost everything and the stress forced me to get divorced because, by the way, money problems is around, like, the biggest problem when it comes to marriages. People get divorced because of that stuff, okay? But if you take it step by step, I'm 25 now. In a year, I build this business up to $4,000. Imagine in five years what you can do. Being debt-free, having your own house, you're married. You build this business up maybe like ten thousand or fifteen thousand dollars a month, right? You have more employees. You're not working that much. You can spend more time with your family and so on, right? But yeah. that's all step by step. You don't have to go crazy with the leverage or anything like that. Your first step right now, your mission number one is going to be get out of debt. Mission two is going to be, hey, I want to build a foundation, save for emergencies, and also start investing, anywhere from ten to twenty five percent. And then mission three is you want to basically lower your expenses by buying your home, putting down that 20% or 10%, following the 30% rule. And then mission five, by the way, while you're paying down that house, you want to keep investing because compound interest is awesome. So if you're going to be paying this house for like 10, 15 years, you want to keep investing also around 10 to 25%. Once you're done with this house, you pay it off. Guess what? I'm debt free. I have a foundation. I have my own house. I don't want to crazy expenses. Everything now is an autopilot. You keep investing, and you're good to go. Okay. Next. Yeah, I have I have a little bit of money in the stock market, but you know I haven't. You know I you know I listen to some of your videos on on the you know on investing and stuff mm -hmm. like that. I haven't fully understood it too much, and then you know, and I'm I'm big on like before I get into all of that, I want to like fully understand it because I know that you have like mm -hmm. you know your portfolio and things like that. But mm -hmm. if I don't understand it too much, I don't want to just copy and paste your portfolio. Because yeah. if anything happens, then you know, then it's like mm -hmm. you know, it's all me. So yeah, yeah. So, so let that's... me give, let me give let me give you the basics then, Chad. The okay. basic idea behind my portfolio and the way I invest in the stock market is pretty simple. What I want is to be diversified, which yeah. means that ETF portfolio you see in all my videos is basically diversified across every single industry. You have, for example, the U.S. market, the international market the small cap market, bonds, both treasury and corporate bonds, real estate, emerging markets. You have a little bit of everything. That way, when the market crashes, notice I said when, it's going to happen, right? When it crashes, yeah. if the U.S. market is down, but the international market is up, I'm good to go. If everything okay. is down, but real estate and my bonds are up, I'm good to go, right? The idea is what you want. By the way, that portfolio is not mine. That portfolio yeah. comes from people that are 10 times smarter than I am, that spent years developing it. People okay. like John C. Bogle, people that want like Nobel like prizes, right? That's where that comes mm -hmm. from. So that's why I follow it. So okay. when you are ready to start investing, right? 
It's a great portfolio to use, but if I have a business and I want to invest for retirement, I would probably do it through my business. That way I can save a lot more money also when it comes to taxes. Okay, so you do it through your business instead. Yeah, I, I do it to my business now. I mean, I have a taxable account, right? But because you know, I, I, I max out everything else because I, I make a lot of money. But I still go ahead and have, for example, a Roth 401k and a 401k with my business. All the money I invest into those accounts basically saves me a ton of money in taxes. Okay. And as far as like um, in the, initially you asked me, Tommy, can I be? Can you be my accountant? The answer, the answer is no. Um, that's not the game I want to play. I, I cannot stand being an accountant. I graduated with that degree. I only used it for myself for a while, but now I have a CPA, right? So as far as an accountant, you just want someone that's going to help you. Look for a local CPA in your area. And by the way, the cool thing about, for example, like being a business owner is that you're the person in demand. When you walk in that door, you're the person that's to say, hey, I pick you. I'm hiring you. If I don't like you, I don't work with you, right? So it'll be very choosy. Now, if you want to, if you want an accountant like the one I use, her name is um Sasha Wise with Wise Accounting down in Florida. You can give her a call and just tell her, hey, Tommy sent me. She'll help you with everything. CPA, 15 years of experience. But overall, just look for a local accountant in your area that actually cares about you and your business and it's gonna be time. But don't just check one, check several, including the one I gave you. And that oh, way yeah. can develop a good idea of what you actually want and what you actually need. Okay, perfect. Yeah, because yeah, I need because I'm I'm very business minded, but mm -hmm. it's just when it comes to the financial parts of things, mm -hmm. that's where things throw me all the way off. So, because I, for example, I have a I have a um a car rental company that I'm establishing now, and I'm but I feel like I'm getting a little too ahead of myself because mm -hmm. I haven't budgeted and organized my financial, mm -hmm. um you know um you know statements and things like that. So Tell that's me why about, I need somebody to kind of guide me on that. Yeah. Tell me about, by the way, accountants are not good at business. Okay. okay. <laughs> okay. It's, it's two different subjects. Okay. Accountants are good at, for example, they're like a, a human calculator, right? When it comes to, oh, you spent this much, you made this much, taxed you this much. That does not mean they're good at business whatsoever or money whatsoever. That's, that's not what that means. Now, this rental car business you're starting out, are you starting it with debt? No, I'm not starting with that. No. How are you doing it? Well, okay, so it was my my girlfriend's car. We put it on the road, and now it's been consistently, you know, and it was paid off already. So, which is awesome. it's, it's positive income right now. How much is it making you guys a month? Um, it makes about a thousand dollars per month. Wow. Mm -hmm. And you, and then I'm guessing you want to get more cars to do it, right? Yes, and that's that was another reason why with the credit um, situation, you know, right now we're, um, you know, mm -hmm. uh, taxes and the stimulus check kind of helped out. So mm -hmm. we should be able to get another car without getting any more debt. But mm -hmm. we eventually wanted to kind of grow it a little bit quicker because mm -hmm. it's in demand from what I'm looking at. So okay. I kind of want more cars on the road to, to supply the demand, you know, at this point. Okay. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. You see how it's in demand right now? Yeah. Do you think it can go out of demand? Definitely. So what happens if it goes out of demand and you have, for example, a bunch of loans? Then it'll be a problem, yeah. Yeah, right. So just, again, you're 25 years old, bro. Just take it step by step. You don't need to rush it. It's making you $1,000 in one year. That's 12 k plus your extra money. That's, by the way, use all this money to pay off your debt. Once you're debt-free, right? You have a whole bunch of free income now to play around with and to kind of grow your money. By the way, I'm not worried about you. You know why? Because from this conversation, tell me, hey, Tommy, I have this business and this business and this business, right? What you have is a lot of yeah. ideas and ways to execute them, right? You're going to do fine no matter what. The problem is when you have too many ideas and you don't have money and you want to borrow the money and when things go wrong, you have a problem, right? Yeah, and that's yeah. what I don't want for you. So just take it easy. Take it step by step. Get out of debt. Once you're done with the debt, you have free like, cash flow. Use that income to go ahead and say, hey, I want to buy a car. All right, let me save this money up. 10 months, the money's there. Let me buy this car. All right, I got it. Oh, my gosh, the man went down. Doesn't matter. This car is mine. Doesn't matter. I don't have to pay anybody. It's my money, right? It's my car. That's a big difference, right? When you pay for something in cash, you're the person in control. It's a big difference from when you have a negotiation with the bank while they're not doing anything, just charging you a bunch of money. Makes sense. Makes sense. 
Okay, that, that definitely makes more sense. Mm -hmm. and, and take it step by step, okay? Focus in, lock in. If you're going to do the cleaning business, do that. If you want to do the, the, um, the, the car rental business, that's fine. But once you get beyond two or three businesses at the same time, usually you're going to be spreading yourself too thin. And remember, right? The whole game is health, wealth, love, and happiness. It's going to be very hard to do everything when you're working, for example, 80 to 100 hours a week and you don't have any time for anything. Yeah. Definitely. Money is great, but health is better. Yeah, that's true. Especially right now, I don't sleep. So. <laughs> <And> <laughs> I, I do have the mindset of like, you know, I sleep when I'm dead, but you know. No, no, don't. Do don't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I hear that a lot until people are dying. They're like, oh, wait, I want to get some sleep, man. Nah, man, yeah. just take it easy. You know what I'm saying? Just, <laughs> just take it easy, bro. It, okay. it, the same, The same thing with money, bro. It's the same thing with like health, right? Just like make a schedule, like make a 24 hour schedule and put in health, wealth, love, and happiness, okay? When it comes to health, I want to exercise for at least like 30 minutes or an hour. When it comes to my wealth, I want to work for 8 to 10, 12 hours, whatever it is. When it comes to love with my girlfriend, I want to spend time with her also, right? Because that's also maintaining a relationship. When it comes to okay. happiness, happiness to me is an activity. Meaning, when I'm doing what makes me happy, I'm happy. I don't wait until I feel happy, no. When I do something I like, that makes me happy. No motivation involved. That makes sense. Okay. I appreciate right, that. Okay. Do you have any more questions, brother? Not at the moment. All right, Chad. And, well, okay, so, so how ahead. would I get this recording? <laughs> just to make sure I get How would you get what? How would I get this recording? You, you're just going to post it or are you going to actually send it to me as well? Wow. So this recording is probably going to come out in a few days. So it's going to okay. take a while, but I'm pretty sure you probably need it right now, right? Yeah, because I'm driving right now, so that's why, I, you know, I'm going to need... Some of the information that you gave me, I'm gonna have to. Yeah. Re, uh, so you know, I, I'll, I'll ask my editor, my editor Danny, to kind of like get like an audio format of this and just send it over to you. That way you can have it ASAP, okay? All right, perfect. Thank you. All right, I'll text it to you. Is that okay? Yeah, definitely. All right, awesome, Chad. Nice talking to you and have fun. All right, man. Have a good one. Peace. All right, peace out. All right, guys. So that right there was Chad. And by the way, Georgia cleaning business, car rental business. And by the way, when things are good, everyone wants to expand, 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 expand. And when things are bad, everyone's like, what? Things are gonna go really bad for you, right? Overall, Chad is 25 years old, talking about buying a house, getting married, having a business. And by the way, that to me is awesome. However, you don't have to rush anything, Chad, right? The main idea is right now, I owe money. I'll pay this off. I have a business. I'll grow it step by step with the same money I actually have, right? When I want to buy a house, I save it for a down payment. I try to pay off as possible, right? That's the whole idea. By the way, overall, I love this conversation right there. But if you guys want to join me on my next call, well, make an appointment down below in the description. They're all free. Schedule a call, and I'll talk to you one-on-one, -on -one, and I'll call you one-on-one. -on -one. See you guys next time. As always, like, subscribe, hit the bell so you're notified. And before I go, if you guys want to text me all the time, join my Patreon link down below, or send me a DM on Instagram at Tommy Bryson. Before I go, if you want to do the call, guys, we'll hear another call right here. Click my face right here. See you guys tomorrow. And as always, peace.